I'm Dan Niles. I'm a clinician with Woods Homes. Uh, I work in uh, a partnership program with our local school board. Um, and as a psychologist, a parent, a foster parent, I'm proud to uh, be with you today to uh, give you a brief synopsis of our presentation as part of the Woods Homes 100 Year Celebration Speaker Series uh, titled, When Nanny 911 Won't Answer the Phone. I hope you enjoy what we have to say. So let's open up our first file drawer of something that a part of attachment or relationship development that might be important as a parent. The information in that drawer you're going to gather over time. Let's talk about the cliche about self-care. As parents you've probably always heard it. What's important about here is if parents don't have and caregivers don't have a plan around self-care, it's likely that that won't happen. In that file drawer, as you hear about all the ways that parents and experts say we need to take care of ourselves as parents and caregivers, you're going to put the ones that are the most important to you. Self-care is critical, and if you put them in that file cabinet and pull them out later, it might be something that you'd be interested in doing. Listening to music more, going to yoga, things that will take care of you. Take care of you so you can take care of the kids. Put that in this drawer. In our second important file drawer in our large parenting filing cabinet, you're going to put those things, those strategies, those things that we do that help us be in touch and attuned to our kids. This helps us pay attention to the big stuff behind the little behaviors. They probably seem like big behaviors to us as parents, but there's lots of stuff underneath there. Now, again, it seems pretty cliche to get to know your kids, but in those file drawers, those are the things that we put in that are active ways that we as parents and caregivers will do things to get in touch with our kids. How do you have those conversations? When? Actual strategies, books, listening to music together, things that you know you will do, things that will stick that will help you get in touch with your kids. In our third file drawer, we're going to talk a little bit about consistency. Being consistently consistent. It is probably the thing that most parenting experts might say is, is important when we're working with children or when we're parenting. The thing is, is that they don't often tell us how to be consistent. And if they do, it might be a little rigid and may not fit for your family. So what we want to do in this file drawer is to take those things that we know about our kids that we talked about in the other file drawer, being in tune and in touch with them, and roll that into some things that we might put in there about being consistent as parents. It's about how do we know what consistent is. It's a strategy for sitting down with our partner or other caregivers to talk about how to do this to joint so we're on the same page all the time. It might be ways to structure things on the fridge like we'll talk about in our next file drawer. But it is active, purposeful, and real strategies for being consistent. And that's what goes in there. In our fourth file drawer, um, and these are the file drawers that are at the bottom. These are about safety and attachment and relationship. This one is no different. This is about routines and rituals. I think that in, for families, it's critical for us to establish good, solid routines. Those are the things that kids find safety in, that families find joy and can experience each other in. But again, like in other things, if we don't have an actual way, something written down, um, a strategy to use, to create good routines and rituals, then they tend not to happen. Or if they do, they tend not to last very long. So in this drawer, put down the things that you talk about with your kids, that you talk about with your caregiving partners, that you learn from everywhere in the world, and put down the things that stick to you about creating good routines and rituals. So let's kind of go up to another level of file drawers. These ones in the ARC framework would be the self-regulation uh, file drawers. We're going to say these are the things that help kids calm down and feel right in the world. The first file drawer we open there is called identifying emotions. 
and it seems, this is about feelings, so bear with me, because I know there's lots of advice about feelings. But you can take some of that advice and put it into this file drawer if it fits for you, about how to identify with kids more than just happy, sad, and angry. It's, it's important, and the, the most critical people in teaching kids to identify emotion are parents and caregivers. You're going to get lots of it at school, you're going to get lots of it with therapists if needed, but parents have a significant influence and they often don't have a good plan about how to teach their kids about emotions and how to identify feelings and emotions and the behaviors. In this file drawer, I want you to take those things that you know about that are a part of your parenting philosophy and put them in there about how you're going to teach your kids to identify good feelings and emotions. So now that we've identified some feelings and emotions, and you all are going to do that very differently. You're going to use all kinds of strategies that you learned from the past um, or that you learned from workshops like this. And then you're going to, now you've got to talk about, so when I can get them to know more than happy and mad and sad, and they have things like frustrated, what do I do with those things? How do I teach kids to regulate those emotions, to calm themselves? That's what this file drawer is full of. These are the self-regulation strategies that you teach kids. We don't always leave those things up to experts to teach therapists or teachers or staff in schools. We want to teach kids how it is to calm down when things get upsetting for them. Even if they're not big problems, we still need to have strategies about how to calm down and regulate. So th that drawer is going to be sitting down with your kids and teaching them, and you are the best teacher, trust me, because you know who they are. You know what makes them calm down, what makes them feel right in the world. Those are the strategies you're going to put into there and pull them out and teach kids how to calm down, how to be good, how to be calm in the world. So once you've opened up your drawer and filled it full of ways to identify emotions and talked about ways to regulate those emotions with kids, another important parenting concept is teaching kids how to express them. Sounds the same, but it's a little bit different. In this file drawer, what you're going to do is you're going to put in the strategies that teach kids safe people and safe places to express emotions. Often lots of behavior with kids, regardless of any diagnosis, comes from an inability to express themselves in a good and healthy way. Expressing emotions is more than just calming down and it's more than just knowing you're mad. It's finding the right places and people. These can be safety plans that you have with kids, connecting them with formal people at school like principals or guidance counselors or in your family. People that they can talk to if they're not comfortable talking to you. And most importantly, how are they going to express emotions to you? And can you make that safe enough? You're going to need some strategies here. These are the kind of things that you can explore and put in this drawer. How am I going to create an environment in my home where expressing emotions has a way and a place? The last level, so to speak, of file drawers deals with competence. Now, competence are about executive functioning, problem solving, self-esteem in some ways. But for parents, the basics around that is we have to teach kids how to be well in the world. And that's not just about emotions or routines. It's about teaching them your values, your expectations, and how to be right in the world, problem solving. We leave problem solving as parents and caregivers. We leave that up to schools often to teach. If you want your kids to problem solve and use things that you think are important in that problem solving process, then you probably need to be the one that influences how they do that. And that's what that, those, to that file drawer is full of. Those are things that you know about your kids and that you know about yourselves as parents that you want them to do. How do they stop and think in the moment? How do they make good decisions? They can learn that from their friends if you'd like, or they can learn that from other experts and that might be okay. But my guess is most of you out there have a way of problem solving that you want to pass on to your kids. Here's where we do it. We do it in this file drawer and we do it in a purposeful way where we take something, we sit down with them, we teach them how to problem solve. And we teach them how to be well in the world, how to build self-esteem and we give praise. Those are the things that happen in this file drawer. When those things are done, then kids are more successful in making decisions when we teach them to them. So use this file drawer a lot, as you will with all of the other file drawers. So I have to apologize in my conclusion if you were hoping to watch this and learn a whole bunch of new strategies. But my guess is that you can find and have heard a lot already. 
What I'm hoping that you might take from this is a way to take all of those things that you hear out in the world and put them in a place that you can evaluate them and use them later. And if that's the thing that you take from this, I think that that might help you be a more organized and more thoughtful parent um, and in ways that you appreciate, that stick for you. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch this video. And if you have more questions, need more information, or want to explore more resources available at Woods Homes, just go to www.woodshomes.ca and you'll find lots of what you're looking for there. Thanks for your time.